TriCaster 455 is the four input version. There are larger ones available, but John, what do you think of this? Well, firstly, four inputs shouldn't be putting you off. There are lots and lots of corporate gigs where four inputs is exactly what you want. I mean, I've, I've done so many where there's only been two cameras, but, but you want to integrate graphics and you want to do backgrounds and, and you want to do grabs and replays and, audio. And, and, and subtitles and do all the audio and then, you know, not only run out to the big screen, but also come out with something at the end of the Record day. Record or you, stream. That you can whack to the Which web. Where you can stream out. Popular. Yeah, this is the right sized box for something like that. Now, and actually, you know what? On that four inputs thing, we should point out that it's not just four inputs. Uh, it's four uh, analog or SDI inputs, mm. and they can be standard there for HD, whatever you like. But you've also got the two net inputs as well as the two inbuilt DDRs, as well as graphics and so on. And so it's actually it's. It's more capable than uh, than a four input device is really giving it credit for. Well, yeah, and when we say four inputs, I mean that would be that would be four like cameras. And as Jim said, the cameras can be standard def or high def, and they can be digital or analog, and they can be all three forms of analog that you're likely mm, to, you to come across. Formats. Yeah. And it's very unfussy. It doesn't care what combinations of these you use. No, and the, the other really cool thing about those inputs is that every input has its own proc amp, so mm -hmm. you can make adjustments to the picture to a certain degree. And as well as that, every input has its own chroma key. Mm. Now, it looks very much like the standard sort of switcher that we've come to know and love. So anybody who's used a Grass 100 or any of those things, which an MVS or whatever, yeah, follow follow that sort of format is going to be very quickly at home with us. It's program preset row. There's key rows, but then the the key buttons also uh, are multi-function, so you can select with the same buttons off to aux rows, off to uh, off, off to other outputs. Yeah, and there are, there are some additional buttons, you know, like sort of things like your your zooms for your live sets and and also your media control for play stop etc yeah. and and look i i got to say i love this surface i love how it feels it feels good it feels solid and you know it's it's heavy enough that it doesn't slide around on the desk and i've seen some very aggressive directors yeah. bashing away oh, buttons yeah. it, and i reckon you could you could bash away at this all day and it, it wouldn't give you grief and it, it follows your actions you know there are plenty of control surfaces where you hit the button and there's you know this is like this slight lag this isn't one mm. of them this does exactly Agreed. exactly what you tell it to do when, when you, you tell it when to. you tell it to do it now in terms of some of the effects jim mentioned virtual sets and zoom and you can very easily set somebody up in a virtual set and then zoom in on that with like a single button yeah it's it's really cool and and look the actual the chroma key as well i've got to say um you know we occasionally shoot stuff on chroma key mm. and uh I, I know how hard it can be to, to you know, set up a chroma key, but the chroma key on this is very unfussy and mm. it's very clean. Mm. And better. it's very quick, you Jim know, there's said a colour picker. He said it was better than a, a certain software editor that he uses all the time. It was that clean. Well, it's faster. Mm. It's faster to get right. And in a live situation, that, that matters. You know, mm. that's what you want. Inbuilt uh, the two digital disc recorders, so basically clip players, and the very nice feature that you can say, roll this clip when I do the take. So you just hit the take button, it does the pre-roll, it's running through the transition. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it kicks off the actual clip as you go, and then the, the clip rolls, and you can even overlay nice, you know, sort of graphic mm. swooshes and full screen wipes and things like that, and there's a whole bunch of those inbuilt. There's so much... Of uh, of that really nice stuff that gives you the look and feel of a really high level production actually comes with this. The, you get like 24 virtual sets with it. Mm -hmm. But at, at the standard end, the stuff that you really expect a basic switcher to do, like the downstream keyer, well there's two downstream keyers, mm. and, and they're nice downstream keyers, and the, uh, the tight link, which just works. Yeah, and you've actually, you've got some additional options for tight link. You can use, there is actually um, software on the device that allows you to generate your titles. If you go for the enhanced version of that software, mm. that then gives you more options and you can even import uh, like live RSS feeds. So if you want a news ticker running along the bottom of your program output, you can do that. Yeah, at an amazingly low price point, this box is doing the job that we traditionally would have expected to use four or five or six boxes to do. Oh. Yeah, That's just the disc recorders. If you think about it, you've got two players, you can record up to four simultaneous streams you know, with audio. That's six disc-based, you know, six broadcast-grade disc-based disc 
replay devices is going to cost you this you know, pretty much the same as what this whole machine does. Yeah. The whole engine is uh, contained within this 2RU box. It's, it's basically PC based takes four or five minutes to, to boot up. You just watch it all happening on the screen. Bang, it's up. You can save a number of different configurations. On the back, you have access to XLR inputs and, uh, and a whole lot of inputs using um, standard tip ring and sleeve connectors. Uh, and uh, everything else is on, on BNCs. Yeah, and it all, look, looking at the back of it, it all makes sense. And uh, I think um, out, out of necessity, we need to mention the obvious, which is that there is some significant cooling going on in that, which you can probably hear in the background. But the idea is not that you mount this in your production bench. You mount this in a machine room somewhere, and then you extend via one USB lead to the control surface and a DVI extender into your monitor. In fact, you can actually run two, two monitors. Yeah, and in terms of extending, well, you know, extending DVI isn't all that hard. Extending USB, piece of Cat5 cable. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And look, uh, look for the money, I think, I think the amount of stuff that this does is incredible. And it's not even just, you know, it's not even just the recorders and the live output. You can actually stream out of this mm. to a number of different streaming providers that are already on the internet. If you plug it into the net, it'll automatically be able to update itself. It's It's been really well thought out. We I get like lots that. of products here at the CX Bunker. You can tell when we're excited and we want to go off and, and play with a box more. This is one of those boxes. Mm, agreed.